Now let's talk about rotational kinematics and derive the equations for rotation, uh, rotational equations of motions. So just a quick recap, the instantaneous angular velocity is given by um, d phi over dt, instantaneous angular, angular acceleration is given by d omega over dt, and the units for displacement in this case are going to be radians. For angular velocity, they are going to be radians per second, and for angular acceleration, they're going to be radians per second squared. So now let's do an example. A wheel with a fixed axle is rotating such that the instantaneous angular velocity of a reference line painted along the radius is given by, as a function of time by omega equals at plus bt squared, where a equals 6.2 radians per second squared and b equals 8.7 radians per second cubed. If the reference line is initially at zero, when t equals zero, find the angular position when t equals two seconds. What is the instantaneous angular acceleration of the reference line at t equals 0 0.5 seconds? So now what does this question give me? Well, it gives me that I have an angular acceleration of a t plus b t squared, and it gives me that the value of a equals 6.2 radians per second squared, and it gives me a value of b, which is 8.7 radians per second cubed. And it's asking me to find for number A the angular displacement and for number B alpha, which is the angular acceleration. Now what is the relationship between omega and phi and omega and alpha? I know omega equals d phi over dt and alpha equals d omega over dt. Well, these are going to be very, very useful for me. So how do I find phi knowing this expression? Well, it becomes easy if I recognize omega dt equals d phi. Then all I have to do is integrate both sides and plug in this value from here to here, right? So I will get at plus bt squared dt equals integration of d phi, right? So in this particular example, the boundary conditions that are given to me is it saying that it is initially at zero and at t equals zero. So if it's zero and zero and some final phi and some final t, right? Whereas we're in part A, it says that this t is actually equals to two seconds. I believe that is correct. Good, right? That makes my life easy. So now all I have to do is solve these. Well, I can easily solve them. This becomes a t d t from zero to two plus b zero to two t squared d t is phi from zero to phi. Right? The, I'm just integrating that one. So this will give me, this implies a t squared divided by 2 from 0 to 2 plus b t cubed by 3, 0 to 2 equals phi. Right? Phi minus 0 obviously just equals phi. Okay? Then I can plug this number in here and this number in here. What do I get? So I can just rewrite this as phi equals a 2 squared by 2 plus b 2 cubed by 3. And then I can plug in the values for a and b and solve to get my answer, which I'm going to leave it up to you guys to be able to do. Okay? So that is going to be my solution for phi. Next comes alpha. Well, how do I find alpha? This makes it my life even more easier because alpha just equals to d omega 
over dt. Sorry, this looks like w. Be careful that your omegas don't look like w's, okay? So d omega over dt, I can plug in this value, d over dt, at plus bt squared. So if I take the differential of this, what do I get? A d over dt of t plus b d over dt of t squared. Agree? So this implies alpha is going to be a plus 2bt. What were my limits? My limits were from 0 to, to, zero, from, um, zero to 2 for in terms of time. I have a value of a, I have a value of b, and I can put t equals 2. Done. Okay? And that's how you are going to solve these problems. Next, talk, let's talk about rotation with constant acceleration. So if you have an object and that is rotating, like for example, the CD, right? We are going to assume that the rotational, uh, that this particle is uh, rotating around a fixed axis. So here, let's uh, just suppose that I'm talking about the z-axis. Then AZ will represent the acceleration vector. And there can be three possible kinds of motion for this. One, the simplest one, would probably be when there is no acceleration, right? Which is the uniform circular motion that we've been talking about. The next simplest would be when AZ is a number, which is a constant, which is equivalent to the translational motion of when we were talking about AX being as a constant number. We will not talk about um, changing accelerations or... or, or um, uh, or accelerations in which case it's uh, um, a, a value that's increasing in terms of accelerations, right? We will also assume particle's initial velocity at t equals zero to be omega naught and the particle's initial position to be phi naught. Um, that just makes our boundary conditions possible. And now our job, as always, is going to be to find all um, possible angular positions and all possible angular uh, velocity values at all given times later than um, phi naught or uh, omega naught, right, which was our initial conditions. And so what we will discover is that these equations of motions re look remarkably similar to the ones for the linear motion uh, given that we are now going to talk about angular, mo angular, momentum, uh, angular motion. Things to keep in mind very carefully is the fact that we will only talk about constant um, accelerations, right? So these will hold only um, for constant acceleration cases. So in order to talk about the equations of motions, we are going to start from our most fundamental equation that we always have and we always like, which is acceleration equals d omega over dt, right? Knowing that, I can move this over and I'll have an alpha dt equals d omega, right? This is going to be integrated from zero to t, and this is going to be integrated from some omega naught to some omega final, right? So this I can rewrite, since this is a constant, it doesn't change with respect to time, I can take it out common and I will have a t from the limit zero to t, and in this case I will have an omega from omega naught to omega. This gives me alpha t equals omega minus omega naught. And that is going to be my first equation of motion. Done. Excellent. Now, this looks remarkably similar to a t equals v minus v naught, which was our equations of motion for the linear case, right? That we had from before. We also know that. Hmm. Now, how will we find the second equation of motion? So for the second equation of motion, What are we going to do? So recall what we did last time. We took omega equals d phi over dt, right? We know that. So then we can plug in this value from omega from here. So we can get omega naught plus alpha t equals d phi over dt. So what I did was I took the value of from equation one. I took the value from equation one 
of omega, move this over and plugged it in here. Excellent. Now what am I going to get? Omega naught plus alpha t dt is equals to d phi, right? Integrating from phi naught to some phi later, right? And then zero to t. What do I get? Omega naught zero to t dt plus alpha zero to t t dt equals delta phi phi naught to phi of d phi, right? This gives me omega naught t plus alpha t squared by 2 equals phi minus phi naught. Or this could also be written as delta phi equals alpha t squared by 2 plus omega naught t, which is my second equation of motion. Excellent. Now for my third equation of motion, actually I'm going to, so for my third equation of motion, third equation of motion, I'm going to simply write Omega, actually, I'm going to write alpha is equals to d omega over dt, right? I can multiply and divide by d phi, right? This gives me d omega over d phi dot d phi over dt which makes it d omega over d phi. This is also omega. Why? Because I know from here, right, that this is the same thing as omega. So now I'll have an alpha omega d omega d phi. Distributing again, taking d phi to the other side, this is going to be d omega. I can integrate both sides. What do I get? Alpha dot phi, if you have a phi naught, then it'll be alpha phi minus phi naught, phi minus phi naught, equals omega squared, starting from omega naught to omega, minus omega naught squared divided by 2. This gives me alpha delta phi times 2 equals omega squared minus omega naught squared. And that is our third equation of motion, which look remarkably similar to the equations of motions for the linear cases, right? There is one-to-one -one correspondence between them.